And there we go. Okay, thank you very much for coming on this afternoon. I'm going to record this session so we can share it with some of the other uh, hacking relationship managers um, and senior managers and also with uh, some of the managers in housing uh, to give us uh, an idea of what the outcome of the week and a bit long discovery for what is now called informing the managed tenancy hub what used to be called single view for housing um so the idea of the next hour or so is to cover uh, what we've been talking about in that discovery so we're going to do this in uh three bits so i'm going to talk a little bit about um uh, put the team together uh and then joel's going to talk a bit about user needs and how we've been validating those uh, and then Stu from Maytech is going to talk about the uh, technology side of things uh, in the first situation we have for that. So I'm going to talk a little bit, I say here, about vision and goals, you know, we work together um, and what the, how we're going to structure the project. Uh, and then we'll do the bits in a sec. So I'm going to nip out of my slides and go over to what I call uh, the hub document, which is the place where we store all the main information that's related to the project. Uh, and briefly, our project vision is to expand on the excellent single view service created for the business and housing needs team, to enable it to be used as a replacement for the current hub uh, in my tenancy service, uh, to allow you to have better experience because they'll get access to a lot more information, which gives them a much more holistic view of the people that they'll be working with um, in our person tenant estates. Um, and also we're going to build a reusable work tray component, which allows partly happening to move away from our systems, which will give us a substantial cost saving. But also we're bearing in mind that that work tray can then be potentially reused by um, other services uh, when we come to build more products and move away from more of existing legacy systems. Um, one of the parts of the project vision is making sure that we have every opportunity work with our user group, which is a subset of the housing officers and area housing managers to make sure we get lots of feedback and iterate while we are developing the new services. So in terms of the project goals, um, first part is to enable housing officers and area housing managers to access single view uh, via Google Authenticator. We had a really good meeting yesterday in which it was agreed that uh, housing officers and area housing managers will be able to do that right away, that there's no limitation on what data they can access. So we're setting them up to be able to access single view as it stands today. We're hoping to get that done as soon as Lorraine's finished signing off the paperwork with Nick, which should be just a few days. Um, uh, add the information related to tenancies uh, into single view. So people can uh, see it in there. Add the generic work tray component, demonstrate that's reusable. Um, move the sections related to tenant rest association meetings, which are currently off out, on our systems, uh, out into uh, somewhere else. Uh, and take an opportunity to uh, restructure the managed tenancy data stores and related APIs because the way that it's set up at the moment is very difficult to build new stuff on top of. Uh, so we're going to take an opportunity to do a bit of refactoring while we're going along. So those are the, the vision and the goals. Uh, we've got a discovery output document, which uh, everybody is very welcome to go through. We've got lots of information on setting about uh, data access, use stories that Joel's going to touch on, and technology which Steve's going to go through. There's a big bit in red in the middle here, which is uh, project governance, because I haven't written the um, business case parts for the API development yet. So Maya has done the updates for single view, which is great, but I need to finish that off and I'll be doing that tomorrow. So that was a very rapid run through of what's happening in terms of the overall vision and goals for the project. Um, what about the team? So obviously, because of the pandemic, we're all a remote team. We're having our standard uh, agile ceremonies. Uh, we've got first planning tomorrow. Uh, Stu's done an excellent job of putting things together in the backlog, along with Jill supplying the user needs she's going to talk about uh, in a little while. Um, and we had a really good uh, sort of pre-planning backlog brewing session today that's given us a really good view of what we think is going to be in the first sprint. 
so we're in the process of putting all these ceremonies together. We're going to have a mid-sprint review part way through to make sure that we're on track um, and uh, all the standard stuff. We have a Slack channel, obviously. Uh, we're having a constant voice meeting. So that's going to sit there that people can optionally join if they want to during the day. So it's like you're sitting next to somebody. Uh, and we're trying that out on Discord because we think it's a little less um, processor intensive than, than running Google Meet. So we'll let you know how that goes. Obviously, got a backlog in Jira. And because there's a lot of folks who are not only new to this project, but are also new to each other, um, I've put some completely optional no work discussion end of day chats that people can come along to just so we can get to know each other a little bit. Uh, just because you know there's there's more to life than work, and uh, uh, I think that'd just be nice to to get to know people on the team a bit. Um, governance. Um, so three overall pieces of work: the improvements to single view, uh, the creating a work tray, and improving uh, managed tenancy. Two contracts: one STA uh, to deliver the single view extensions and the work tray and the extension to the existing platform API contract to deliver the improvements to the most Tennessee data stores and API. But there is one team that's delivering all of this work. So we've got one team doing all the work, two contracts, three pieces of work, obviously Partridge in a pear tree uh, <clears throat> at the top. Um, so that's how we are structuring the uh, governance. Uh, I have rattled through that fairly quickly to give us more time to talk about um, uh, using these technical plans. So in terms of user needs, uh, combination of business goals, uh, user needs from the um, uh, users, obviously, uh, and technical constraints. Uh, and then it's over to Jill to walk okay. us through what we do. So the managed tenancy service has been going for a couple of years now, and during that time, we've been collecting feedback about the service from the people who use it, which are the housing officers and area housing managers. And with our old system, it was not always possible or even easy to update the service. But now we've got an opportunity to include some changes based on the feedback where we can, where we can incorporate those changes into the work that we're doing, which is primarily to get um, managed tenancy hub off about systems. Um, we've got uh, some user involvement. So previously we've worked with a core of housing officers, although eventually we did involve most of the housing officers and area housing managers over those couple of years. Um, but this time we're, we're focusing with a user group, which is, which is a mix of uh, four housing officers and four area housing managers, which Lorraine, who's the product owners, owner, helped put that together for us. Um, we are trialing Google Chat as a way of communicating with the group. So this might be a new way of working for some people, um, but it is within the Google suite. So we're going to try that out and see how it goes um, as one of our ways of communicating with them. Um, and it saved us introducing a completely new product such as Slack for them. So we've, keep, we've kept them within Google. So hopefully that might have some longer term benefits for them as well. User stories, which is the next slide, David, thank you. Um, so our user stories, uh, we initially drafted them, the product owner, Lorraine, myself, and David, I think it was. Um, we might have had a, um, a developer in there at, at the same time, I think. Um, uh, so we made, we made some uh, initial user stories, and that was kind of based on the current service and the feedback that we'd had about the service. Um, we then took that to a recently to a user group session where we went through those user stories and validated them with the users, updated them and added some stories. I think we had a couple of new ones. So that was all really good. Um, so the user stories take the standard um, format of as a, for example, a housing officer or area house managers. I want to have a work tray that stores all of the items that I need to work on so that my work has structure. So there's a link there to the list, but, I, um, but I'll just cover at a high level what's in that list. So the user stories in that list are to do with the work tray component. So viewing and interacting with and managing work items such as processes and actions. Um, 
starting viewing interacting and managing work items those might work items um, being able to search for a resident and view the residents details so this is where we'll be integrating it with the single view tool so that housing officers and ma their managers have a can have a greater picture of a, a resident uh, there's also some areas for the area housing managers so they can see an overview of their the work being done in their teams and manage that work um, we've also got an element of the ETRA process that's enhanced tenants and residents association uh, process which is when housing officers go out to TRA meetings and um, gather up some actions from that meeting that the council needs to do on estates uh, so we need to be able to find the TRA, they need to be able to manage their, their actions that arise from the ETRA meetings. Um, those are the bits that are in our systems and we, then, we need to integrate that with the ETRA meeting, which we previously developed in React. Uh, next slide, I think, David. So um, mapped out some of the current user journeys, um, sort of highlighting where we need to um, integrate uh, the out systems bits that we're replatforming with the existing React um, parts of the service that have already been replatformed. So that includes um, the kind of working with residents user journey within managed tenancy, so, um, and also estate work user journeys within managed tenancy. So that's the, uh, the ETRA bit essentially. Um, there's also an admin area for the area house managers, which is much more straightforward, nor within our systems, as I said earlier, which so that journey hasn't actually been mapped, but it's it's pretty straightforward. So we haven't mapped that one at that point. So I think that's it for me. Over to Stu. Yeah, thanks, Jill. Uh, before we continue, I know Kate, you've got a question there um, in the chat. Um, I'm happy to have a go answering it, but I don't know if uh, David or Jill, you also want to to get involved. So for benefits of people who are watching this later, Kate said, uh, regarding moving out systems, we want to be clear about the goal in relation to that and what we're doing because we just think that things are moving in the right direction. So the minimum thing for getting us off out systems uh, is to be able to replace uh, the, the hub part, which is to be able to search for information about people and their related tenancies, which we're going to be doing by introducing tenancy related information into single view, making that part of what's searchable. Um, and then to be able to uh, see the information, see the information related to tasks that people have to do, which is the work trade component we're building, and then to be able to kick off the um, processes, which we in the process of finishing the previous project with DXW, which was to replatform those off our systems and make them available offline. So we're going to connect into those. So that's the piece that's really taking us off our systems, along with the Morris account piece that's uh, taking place at the same time to move the other product off. That enables us to save a lot of money of not having to repurchase our systems licenses at the end of September. Um, the other bits that, that we're mainly doing is tidying up the, the um, existing um, data and API infrastructure in order to enable us to do better things on top of this and, and very much in line with the uh, strategy for platform and service APIs that, that Rashmi is heading up. So it's about smooth. So in terms of not specifically register out systems, the two things we're really doing is uh, really putting things in line with our API strategy for uh, reuse of, of that layer and ensuring that the work trade component as we build it is built specifically as a reusable component. So again, it's something that we can uh, factor into uh, future services going forward. So I think there's a real, um, I'm trying to say synergy, there's a real synergy of um, <laughs> being able to solve the problem for housing and be able to build some some things that uh, enable us to reuse another services in the future. Cool. cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, on a related note, uh, th these slides are actually a condensed version of the um, the, the, the ones I presented yesterday at uh, uh, the kickoff meeting with the wider team and uh, with all the engineers present. So. Um, Yesterday, we did actually present uh, a phased approach. And one of those phases is really an MVP to 
get us off out systems. So it's not really where we want to be, but it's the, it's the minimum we, we have to do in order to achieve that single goal. Um, we then have later phase that, that sort of deals with all the stuff that Dave was talking about. So basically tidying up after ourselves and uh, just sort of uh, ticking all the boxes and uh, crossing all the T's, et cetera. Um, but if anyone does want to look at the uh, the full side deck, it is available. I think it's linked in, in David's um, Hub document. So next slide, please, David. So as an introduction, I mean, a lot of this stuff, <laughs> I hope everyone's already familiar with, this is really intended uh, for, for newcomers to the team. Um, but really, yeah, tenancy management is a function of Hackney's housing team. We've got various systems in use. Uh, we've got the Hub App on Out systems. We've got a set of housing um, uh, business processes which are currently in production uh, on a legacy app altogether. And um, we've got another work stream, another uh, team are doing to migrate those to something a bit more strategic, um, which is important because we have a dependency on those processes. Um, so the, the, the sort of inter-team dependency there um, needs some careful management. But this project's primary goal is to remove dependencies and out systems, as we've talked about, and it's time sensitive. Uh, but the secondary goals, as David mentioned, uh, include improving overall architecture for this area. And we've got three main work streams in the project. We're going to re-implement the Manager Tenancy API, uh, try and do it in a slightly more um, strategic way from a technology point of view. Also simplify it where we can. Um, and um, some change will be required just as a, as a result of, um, of moving to use single view rather than out systems. Um, we're also going to move all the hub views at the moment, the read-only views uh, that are in out systems into single view. Some of those already exist, so things uh, to do with, with sort of individuals uh, and some aspects of tenancies already exist in single view, so there's nothing to do there, but we will add additional views when necessary. Uh, and the work tray from out systems is going to be moved to a new dedicated work tray application that will sit alongside single view but won't actually be part of it. Next slide, please, David. Uh, in terms of the plan changes to the, the, the tenancy API, or manager tenancy API, I should say, um, we're going to move uh, hub functionality to single view. So this is the read-only stuff. Um, very much the idea here being extending what's there already. So uh, where we have the sort of quick view things, we'll add some, some additional uh, pieces to reflect the new entities that are going to be um, necessary. So tenancies, properties. Um, we also need to limit access to information based on user need. So we, I, I think we're actually saying at the moment that all users will have identical access initially, but we still need to consider this and make sure we have a mechanism in place to, uh, to restrict access uh, based on whatever criteria we, we decide. And uh, we're also going to re-implement the API, as I mentioned, uh, following best practices, uh, just simplify, improve, um, there's a big piece around data. So currently a lot of the data that relates to this service is stored in dynamic CRM, which probably isn't the best place for it. So there's a piece of work there to, to move that, um, which probably comes into our sort of longer term or phase two approach rather than the MVP. Uh, but also we want to, rather than accessing data directly, we want to use the strategic platform APIs to decouple these services from uh, the underlying databases. That again, best practice. Um, and we also need to remove the dedicated authentication. So currently every user of OutSystems has their own login, which is maintained by OutSystems, completely independent of uh, any of the other logins that people use. So we'll get rid of that. And uh, yeah, we standardize using the Google account model that we've started to use elsewhere. Next slide, please, David. Uh, for single view, plan changes are to, uh, like I say, add these new UI components, so uh, to do with tenants, tenancies, and properties. So there's some overlap with the tenants because uh, the existing views for uh, residents or, or people already include some information about tenancies, so not a huge amount to do there. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a few tweaks we can do. Uh, and, again, enabling access control. Um, so we're going to extend the scheme that's been used elsewhere. So uh, authentication is just via... Uh, the Google account that everyone is already using. Authorization uh, or access control will be via group membership. So, I mean, we haven't really got down to the details as yet, but uh, essentially we'll, we'll create groups um, within Google to represent different teams or business areas. And then membership of those groups will determine whether or not you can see those related screens in single view. Next slide, please. We're also going to introduce this new uh, application, the Hackney Work Tray. 
So this will replace the current work tray functionality uh, within out systems, but it's going to be implemented in a, in a way that makes it extensible. Uh, so in theory, if another uh, uh, application or business area wants to, to do something similar, they can uh, reuse this without too much difficulty. Um, as I say, it sits alongside the, the core single view app. So this is, this is a different piece of software, but it's very much complementary. So they will link backward and forward between each other. Uh, and we'll just have a, a list of, of work items for a user, uh, and there'll be all sorts of, uh, sort of generic operations, so managing uh, work items, so cancelling them, moving them around, reassigning them. But anything that involves actually doing something uh, meaningful or interaction um, will involve uh, linking back to the originating application. So this is just a generic way of, 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 of managing uh, people's work. It doesn't actually um, know anything about the, the, the items that are in that, that list. All it's doing is uh, is presenting them, uh, and hence the opportunity for reuse. Uh, next slide, please, David. Additional tasks for the project. So alongside those three main tasks, we also have a couple of other things we need to tidy up. So um, there's the ETRA process that Jill mentioned. That has already started to, to be migrated to uh, a, a new technology stack. So we need to complete that because there's some dependencies on the OutSystems stuff. Um, so it's a yeah, relatively small amount of work that needs to happen before OutSystems goes away. And then once we've um, moved all this stuff, we actually need to decommission OutSystems. So we need to work out what actually has to happen to turn this off and, and prevent the, the license from being renewed. Uh, and things like archiving code as well, if possible, so that we've got it as a reference. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and this is just a few words on the data strategy. So during discovery, we we, came, we we encountered a few areas where we think we can improve things. I think David, you touched on this right at the start. Um, at the moment, as I say, a lot of the managed tenancy specific data is is in Dynamics. It shouldn't really be there. It doesn't make sense for it to be there. There's already a database for managed tenancy, which isn't really used for very much. So we will move all of that data into that database. So this is, to be clear, stuff that's only related to managed tenancy. Anything else will be migrated to use platform APIs uh, as they become available. And we, we need to sort of influence the roadmap, I think, for the platform API team to make sure that the things that we need for this project are available in time. Uh, and in the interim period, we'll, we'll continue to, to use direct data access. Um, so. Yeah, if, if for whatever reason the platform APIs don't become available in that time frame, then we can still get off out systems, albeit in a suboptimal way. And um, at the moment, a lot of the data that's in Dynamics that managed tenancy uses is isn't actually um, it, it's not actually uh, that isn't its primary uh, place of, of residence. It's actually synced from other places, mostly from uh, I think uh, UH. So that data is synced once a day, which means it's it's stale potentially. Um, and also, uh, we're, we're sort of inferring uh, additional information based on, on that data that's synced over, which isn't ideal. So fundamentally, what we want to do is ensure that rather than going to Dynamics to retrieve data, we just go to the, the system of record, whether that data is a source, where, wherever it's updated. Uh, and that way, we get the most current data whenever we're doing uh, I don't think there's anything more to say on that. Next slide, please. So there's a few slides here just looking at uh, architecture. So I tried to capture the current state and uh, the target state. Um, we won't delve too much into these, but like I say, if anyone wants to, to look in more detail, these diagrams plus some more are in the, the uh, separate slide deck. So this is just showing um, the three main areas of software. So we've got out systems, top left. We've got the various housing processes top right, the, uh, the sort of legacy app at the moment that's, that they're implemented in. Uh, and then we've got the manager tenancy bit, which consists of uh, two separate APIs, um, one for, for the manager tenancy hub and one for, for the processes. Uh, next slide, please, David. Mm -hmm. just stop a You'll notice this is the target uh, state. The only things really that have changed here is that top left has changed from being out systems to instead being single view. Um, as a, as a sort of broad area of, um, of applications rather than being specifically a software. So we've got in there the single view um, UI as it is now. We've got this new work tray UI. Um, we've also migrated all of the housing processes to the new strategic tech stack. We've um, migrated away from direct data access for platform data and instead we're using platform APIs. 
Importantly, also, everything here is in the cloud. So at the moment, we've got a couple of things around manager tenancy, I think the database and the API are duplicated on-premise and in the cloud, which isn't ideal at all. So this will enable us to move completely to, to everything being hosted in the cloud and get rid of that mixed hybrid deployment. Um, next slide, please, David. And similarly, this is this and the next slide show the entity mapping for the current state and uh, the target state. So it's, it's not very easy to see what's on here, but basically it describes what I've just talked about. We've got a lot of stuff in Dynamics. Some of that stuff comes from or is synced from uh, UH. Um, that's not really what, where we want to be. There's a couple of other systems as well that we're accessing. Uh, if you move to the next slide, please, David. What changes here is anything that's related to manager tenancy only is now in the bottom in uh, in, a, in a dedicated database. Everything else is retrieved via an API, a platform API. So there's no direct data access at all. And I think that is it. Does anyone have any questions? No, excellent. Cool, thank you very much indeed, Stu. So the one thing that uh, I thought I'd to add while Stu was going through all of that excellent stuff was that there's some interesting questions that have uh, come out of some of the discussions around things that we might not necessarily implement during this project so that we might carry on uh, taking forward. Uh, what, a couple of things that we've been discussing today is um, how uh, generic or what's the overall uh, underlying user needs for, for WorkTrace. So we obviously want to make a reference implementation for uh, this project for housing to replace the our system most tenancy. But there's also some thinking about how we can make that reusable for other uh, parts of the organization without boiling the ocean, without bringing a lot of user needs right in the start. So that's an interesting conversation that, that we'll have. But there's also one that's going to address um, an ongoing conversation that's been happening for, for quite a long time, which is how we maintain our uh, data associations between members of staff and areas of the borough that they are responsible for. Uh, and at the moment, those kind of um, uh, changes need to be made by people going into uh, databases and hand changing them on behalf of uh, other parts of the organization, and they've been asking for a long time to have some kind of user interface to be able to do that themselves. Now, that's definitely not, definitely, definitely not something we're going to implement as part of this project, but it might be interesting to think whether it would be appropriate to design the way that we put our APIs together in a way that would enable us to go and do something like that in the future. So no decisions about that yet, but that's just a conversation that we've been having that might be useful uh, in terms of, again, thinking about reuse for um, how we build more platform related things going forward. Um, but thank you very much to, to Jill for going through the need stuff and for Stu to going through the technical stuff. There's obviously a lot more of uh, both of these. We have the full set of user needs uh, and Stu's done a lot more work on the technical side of things and the team are having lots of uh, discussions about how the technology is going to get put together all the time. Uh, if you'd like more information about either of those, uh, please get in touch with me and I will um, uh, bring that up for you. Um, in general, we're going to be doing uh, week notes every week uh, and we're going to be doing show and tells every sprint, so every two weeks. Um, and I'll make sure that they're passed around to all the appropriate people so it's being published openly. Um, yeah, and if you generally have any questions, just get in touch and we'll be very happy to answer anything that you've got. Okay, thank you much, one and all. Nice. Thanks. Thanks all. Thank you.